Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Teacher May Sam, and today we are going to talk about C1 level all together. Let's get the ball rolling. Unit 1. Here there is a conversation between two colleagues who are working temporarily in another country. All right? Gilbert and Anna are talking. Gilbert says, Oh man, am I ready to head home? Fantastic statement, fantastic sentence. You know, in C1 level, English students, English learners need to paraphrase sentences correctly and beautifully. What we're going to do in this level is going to be paraphrasing, okay? So what is paraphrasing? Maybe you know it. Paraphrasing means to change the sentence okay and retell the sentence in a different way but both of the sentences should have the same meaning this is called paraphrasing so here uh, there are lots of lots of techniques of paraphrasing i'm not going to cover all of them but step by step you are going to learn now the easiest way to paraphrase is to use synonyms or not plus antonym mostly if you use synonyms, it should work. Now, Gilbert starts and says, oh man, am I ready to head home? So head means, of course, that this one, this part of the body, but as a verb, it means to go in a specific direction, generally forward, uh, like a kind of forward, backward, right, left direction, all right? So Gilbert says, I need to go back I am prepared, I am ready to go back, to return my home country, all right? And one more point is this, you know, in paraphrasing, there is no specific way or method, or we cannot say only this paraphrasing is correct, that one is incorrect, no, there isn't such a thing, you know, in paraphrasing. So everybody can paraphrase as he or she wishes, but, we have good paraphrasing, we have bad paraphrasing, okay? So we have to just practice a lot in order to be really great at this. All right, Anna continues. What? Are you kidding? I can't get enough of this place. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? You can't be serious, man. Why? Why are you telling so? Because I can't get enough of this place. So let me share uh, the vocabulary here. You can take a picture or whatnot. So uh, very quickly, head means to move in a specific direction. Can't get enough of something means to like something very much uh, and you want it a lot. Get over something, specifically when you're ill or sick and you recovered, you can say, I got over this illness. Or it has another meaning, which means to start feel happy. Of course, when you're ill, you're unhappy. When you are recovered, you are really happy, right? So that happiness is like get over something. Frankly means openly, honestly. Be a pain in the neck. Of course, it means to be bothering or to bother someone. Or how can I say to be annoying person, annoying thing, annoying situation, annoying place, annoying everything. Understand? Now let's go back and let's see. I can't get enough of this place. It means that if I stay in this place more, I would love this place more. Understand? Gilbert says, well, it's been three weeks and I think I've had about enough. I'm tired of eating strange food. So obviously you can, you know, paraphrase sentence by sentence. So uh, let's, let's just do it. Well, it's been three weeks. We can say it's almost a month. You know, three weeks, if you round it up, it can be one month. You know, we can say it's approximately a month, right? And I think I have had about enough. It means that that's enough for me. I cannot tolerate this place any longer. I have had about enough. I'm tired of eating strange food. Sick and tired is a kind of idiom. I am sick and tired. I am bored. You know, it is annoying to eat strange food. So eating, we can say consuming, right? 
eat, consume, or consume. A simple way of paraphrasing this sentence can be, I'm really sick and tired of consuming a strange or unusual, let's say unusual, meal. We can also change food to meal, right? Anna says, wow, I feel just the opposite. I feel just the opposite means I disagree with you or I don't agree with you, right? I can't get over how much I enjoy being here. It means that, for example, a kind of paraphrasing. Anna wants to say as a kind of paraphrasing like that, you cannot imagine how deeply I am in love with this place, right? How deeply I love this place, or you can also say that. I enjoy being here, right? I love how different the food is. So Anna could say, I really enjoy to taste different types of food, different types of, or various types of meals, right? We can say that. Gilbert continues, well, not me, means no, I disagree with you. It's not me, I can't. And frankly, it's a pain in the neck having to work so hard to understand what people are saying to me. You know, before continuing, let me tell you something. You know, one of the usages of the paraphrasing is this. You know, if you are really master of that language or if you really understand every detail of that language, every sentence, every word, as a kind of native person, if you are so fluent, so it means that you have to be able to play with the words, maneuver with the words so it can show how well you know English, right? So, for example, listen to this sentence, to this example. There's a situation, okay, it's winter, outside is raining. There, there are two people, one person is inside, the other person is coming in. The person who comes in says, wow, it's raining today. The person who is sitting in the room says, yeah, today is really cold. It was really cold. So both of these people are talking about the same thing, but in a different way. So this is one of the greatest examples of paraphrasing, let's say, right? The same scenario can repeat itself here. For example, Gilbert says, and frankly, it's a pain in the neck having to work so hard to understand what people are saying to me. Frankly, openly, honestly, right? It is a pain in the neck. We can say it is really annoying having to work so hard to understand. Understand what people are saying. Can we say communicate? I think we can say so. It is so difficult. It is so hard, arduous. These are really good words. Arduous, difficult to be able to figure out what people are saying, to be able to figure out how to communicate with people, right? So this is... I mean, the way that we can paraphrase. Now, Anna tries to paraphrase Gilbert's sentences and retells the same thing in a different way. Let's see. Anna says, I actually think it's fun trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to communicate. So in other words, Anna is simply paraphrasing Gilbert's sentences, right? Stop complaining. Please do not blame. Please do not complain. Please do not nag, right? We can say nagging, nag. You will be home before you know it. It means that we are going to return home as soon as possible. You cannot really imagine. Gilbert continues, fine by me. It means that I am really okay. I am ready for that. Really ready for that. There is no place like home. How can we paraphrase this? Can we say home sweet home? Awesome. Now let's go forward and let's talk about another conversation describing people's personalities. So personality like behaviors and everybody has a kind of character and, you know, attitude or this kind of stuff. Now let's talk about that. A and B are talking. A says, have you had a chance to meet the new manager? What a beautiful question. You know, one of the really important thing for language learners is to be able to ask beautiful questions, okay? You know, speaking any kind of language doesn't mean to only answer the, the questions, right? You know, speaking beautifully in any kind of language doesn't mean that you have to just answer the questions. You know, sometimes you have to be able to ask questions beautifully. This is one of them. So what happens 
what can you do? You need to imitate native speakers. You have to listen so carefully and see how those people, I mean native speakers, are making sentences, making questions. This is the only strategy that I can tell you. Now, have you had a chance? What a beautiful phrase. You know, I'm a student right now. I really love this. And I try to grab that phrase and try to retell different sentences, remake different sentences. For example, have you had a chance to watch that movie? Have you had a chance to visit your, for example, uncle? Have you had a chance to open up that box? Have you had a chance to taste that coffee? And, and, and. So what happened? I use the beautiful, one of the beautiful phrases, okay, uh, in English, and then try to just rephrase it, retell it, or remake so many sentences. Now, have you had a chance to meet the new manager? New or new? New like American, new is like standard English. B says, Liz, are you talking about Liz? So Liz is a name, of course, the name of the manager, the new manager. Actually, no. Have you? Have you met her? Not yet. Another strategy of, of understanding or figuring out people's behaviors, people's sentences, you know, uh, in, in any kind of language is to deeply concentrating or focusing on what people are saying or what people are trying to say. Here, not yet. What does it mean? It means that, you know, I have a plan to meet her, but so far, until now, I haven't had a chance to meet her. But I will, or I have to, because she's the manager, of, you know, sooner or later, I have to meet her, right? So not yet. I wonder what she's like. I wonder means I am curious to know. I really want to know how, what type of person she is or what sort of personality she has. Well, everyone says she is bad news. So good news, bad news. It's a kind of expression. You know, good news, if somebody or something affects you or affects the environment, affects people, positively, he or she or that thing is a good news. Or vice versa, if that person or thing affects negatively, that person or thing is, you know, a bad news. So everyone says she is bad news. She affects others, affects colleagues, affects people in the, in the company negatively. Or maybe she bothers them, she, you know, kind of threatens you know others i don't know a answers like you know you can't believe everything you hear what a beautiful phrase what a beautiful phrase why because it's really beautiful as a student as a language learner language user everybody can use these phrases to make new sentences right you can't believe everything you hear you can't believe everything you eat you can believe everything you read, everything you watch, everything you play, you taste, I don't know, you watch, and, and, and. Beautiful, beautiful. She might turn out to be a real sweetheart. Turn out means as a result, okay, at the end, as a result, uh, uh, something can uh, really surprise you. In other words, the result of something in the future generally can surprise you or the outcome or the result of something can be really surprising. So she might turn out to be a real sweetheart. It means that who knows? Maybe she's really a positive person. She's a really lovely person. She's a really kind person. Who says so? Do not believe everything you hear, right? Beautiful. Now let's talk about the last slide in unit one. Personality types or traits, positive and negative. So everything is clear here. I'm going to tell you some extra information maybe because you can pause the video and read or take a picture or whatnot. So for positive, a sweetheart is a kind person. Everybody in, a, in the uh, society, in the company, in a school, hospital, a working place uh, loves that person. Very cute. I mean, he or she can get along with others really easily and uh, he or she is not a troublemaker and they can get along really well. A team player or a people person. These two phrases, these two expressions, let's say, uh, look so similar. 
but there is a slight difference. A team player is a player, is a person, let's say, in a company specifically or in, any, in, in school or everywhere, is a person who sacrifices himself or herself, who dedicates himself or herself for the sake of the company. He or she wants the company to go forward, to be successful. Understand? And he or she loves, I mean, working with others. He or she doesn't want to be individual, doesn't want to be alone, right? A people person, on the other hand, is almost the same. The difference is this. A people person only is, I mean, the people person is uh, really ready to work with others. He or she can have a kind of teamwork or, you know, group work. He is okay with it. He or she is okay with it. But the person does not sacrifice, does not kill himself or herself for the sake of the company. That is the only difference. A brain, on the other hand, a brain means a problem solver, not always an intelligent person. Generally, a problem solver in the company, generally, he or she is a kind of intelligent person but not necessarily, right? So in other words, brain means a problem solver. Now, let's talk about a negative traits. A tyrant, generally a boss or manager who asks you to work harder and harder and harder, right? No mercy, no mercy. Workaholic, holic is a kind of addiction. Workaholic is a person who is addicted to work or working. Alcoholic is a person who is addicted to alcohol. Shopaholic is a person who is addicted to shopping and, and, and. A pain in the neck, we just talked about it, okay? An annoying person or a person who is bothering others. A wise guy is a synonym with the phrase, with the idiom, a pain in the neck. It means that the person is always complaining. The person always sees the negativity or imperfections in the company, in a school, or in different working places, and he or she just underline, I mean, focuses, touches that specific imperfection. That person generally is called a wise guy. Understand? Unit two. Let's talk about this sound bites. These two people, Tanya and Ken, are talking about or comparing their musical tastes. Let's talk about it. Tanya, wow, we have got quite a CD collection. It means you have a big collection of CDs. You know, you, look at this. You have lots of CDs. Come on. Ken says, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. Let's put something on. Put on something. It means that let's put a kind of disc on the disc player or tape player or cassette player. I don't know. Tanya says, got any jazz? We talked about this in B2 level. You know, in speaking, you don't have to be standard. You don't have to be formal. Just, I mean, kind of slang, you know, you don't have to be formal. In other words, if you just drop, eliminate helping verbs or, or helping words, right? And just make a sentence, your tone, if you just raise your voice sometimes, it means that you're asking a question. For example, in here, Got any jazz means have you got any jazz? It means that do you have any disc, CD, or DVD which is related to jazz? It means that I need a jazz music, a jazz song, let's say, for example. Ken says, how about some Gato Barbieri? I hope I pronounced his name correctly. I've got Phoenix. Gato or Gato Barbieri is the name of the singer or composer or musician. I've got Phoenix. So Phoenix is the name of the music album or music CD, let's say. Tanya continues. Actually, his saxophone playing kind gets on my nerves on that one. So to get on one's nerves, it means that it makes me crazy. It makes me angry. I cannot tolerate it. I cannot tolerate it, right? It gets on my nerves on that one. So whenever Gato Barbieri is, is playing saxophone, I mean, Tanya wants to fly, wants to just jump, jump out of the window because Gato or Gato Barbieri really irritates her, makes her angry, right? Ken says, what? Really? I'm totally into him. 
Phoenix is one of my all-time favorites. So I'm really into him. What a beautiful phrase again. Beautiful idiom, beautiful expression. Please use these expressions to beautify your English. I always say. So I am into someone. I am into something. It means that I really enjoy. I'm a big fan of that person. I'm a big fan of that thing. You can use I am into, into someone or into something in every situation. For example, you can say I'm really into football. And instead of saying I love football, which is really a one level, you can say I'm really into football. I'm really into basketball, into music, into dancing, into hiking, and, and, and. It means that I really enjoy it professionally. I am really big fan. I am a big fan of that thing or that person, right? Phoenix is one of my all-time favorites. What a beautiful phrase. Always beautiful. One of my all-time favorites is this. One of my all-time favorites is pizza. One of my all-time favorites is Terminator as a movie, and, and, and. You can beautify your sentences by using these beautiful phrases. I always repeat myself. Tanya says, yeah, but it's pretty hard to dance to. One of the biggest problems here because it's a kind of party and we have to dance. But, you know, with saxophone and, you know, kind of that style, we cannot dance. We need something with high tempo, right? To just get the ballroom, to just get the party going on, right? We cannot dance to that rhythm. Ken says, well, have you heard some of his later stuff? What a beautiful question. Have you heard some of his latest stuff? Latest means current, recent, right? Recent stuff. Stuff means things. Because we're talking about music or musician, stuff here means musical track or songs or music itself, right? Tanya says, no, what's it like? Means, can you explain, can you describe you know, that type of music. Ken says, it's got more of a Latin feel. Kind of, you know, Latin music, right? It's definitely get the party started. So we can say the party can get started to that rhythm, let's say. Tanya says, oh, yeah, really? Let's give it a listen. Let's try it. Let's just try and see what type of music that is. Now let's talk. Describe the music you listen to, right? A and B are talking again. A says, so what have you been listening to lately? Again, beautiful, really beautiful. You know, because we, I can modify, I can modify this phrase and create other sentences out of it. Super beautiful. What have you been listening to lately? Where have you been going lately? What have you been watching lately? What have you been eating lately, playing lately, doing lately, listening lately, reading lately, and, and, and. Beautiful. Where, with whom, for example, what. You can also change those, you know, uh, question words also. Mostly world music. I listen to international or global or universal. Yeah, universal music, let's say. Ever heard of Yusin Dor? Like, have you ever heard of Yusin Dor? Yusin Dor is a kind of musician. You can just Google it or YouTube it. You can watch some uh, music or some videos about him. And I think maybe you can like it. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, yeah. He's from Senegal, right? Where is Senegal? I think Senegal should be in Africa or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. He's from Senegal. You know, I've actually never heard his music. I have no idea what type of music he has or he produces. What's he like? Can you describe? Can you explain? Well, he's got a terrific voice and a unique sound. Terrific is different from traffic. So traffic is different. Terrific is different. Terrific means excellent. Let's read some of the, for example, synonyms here. You know, synonyms for terrific are excellent, wonderful, marvelous, magnificent, superb, splendid, glorious, lovely, delightful, first class, first rate, outstanding. Antonyms or opposites are dreadful, awful, horrible, terrible, very bad. You know, he has got or he has a terrific voice, beautiful voice, excellent voice and a unique 
sound. Unique means sameless. Only one example of that thing or that person is available. I'd be happy to lend you a CD if you'd like. If we want to be socially approved by others, we have to follow some social necessity. If somebody praises you or uh, compliments you, I mean, you know, normally you have to say like, for example, I'd be happy to lend it to you. Even you don't really mean it. I don't know. It depends. I mean, it changes from country to country, from person to person, from maybe city to city, but you know it better. Whatever works for you, just do it. I'd be happy to lend you a CD if you'd like. Means I can lend it. I mean, you can just listen and give it back. Maybe you won't. I don't know. All right. Thanks. Yeah, why not? I'll let you know what I think. Means that I can... I can take your CD, I can borrow it, listen to it, and at the end of the day, I can, I can tell what I think about the music or style. Elements of music. Element here means parts, components, different parts or components of something. Elements of music. You know, the definitions and explanations of these words are available here, and I don't want to read them again, but beat means rhythm. You know, it is beat, like one, two, three, one, two, three, or slow beat, like one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So these are beats or rhythm of the music. On YouTube or on Google, if you want to uh, look for some type of music, like modern music, you don't need to write or type, let's say, uh, a kind of slow music or fast music. You can say, upbeat music like fast downbeat music like slow music lyrics means the sentences the uh, poem of the music i mean the song let's say this is called lyrics melody any kind of harmonic music is melody generally a kind of harmonic music or any kind of good music is called melody sound and voice so lots of differences. One of the biggest differences is this. Sound is general. For example, this is sound. Or sound of guitar. Sound of knocking on a door. Sound of like snapping your finger. Or and, and, and. But the voice is specifically used for human voice because everybody has got vocal cords and everybody has got a unique voice, right? Because we articulate something through our by by means of our vocal cords, so it creates a kind of uh, you, uh, how can I say uniqueness or um, a samelessness for for humanity. So that's why if you want to use your own thing, you want to refer that address it. You have to say voice. For general things, you have to say sound. Now let's talk about describing a kind of creative person again positive qualities negative qualities you know creativity or creative people are somehow different type of people right generally artists or those people who are really different who who see the world differently they are really creative and generally they have different characters also let's let's just read them positive qualities gifted as a gift, God gave you a kind of ability as a gift. Go and use it. This is your gift. Go and use it. It can be anything. You know, some people can really draw pictures, draw sketches. Somebody can sing a song. Somebody can play the piano, play a musical instrument. Uh, somebody is really good at sports or acting or teaching or even learning. Uh, I mean, anything. You can just use it for everything. Energetic. Energetic means full of energy. Full of energy. One, two, three, jump. You know? Imaginative. Imaginative person. Generally, writers. I mean, you have to just imagine something, then write. Or comedians. I mean, stand-up comedians normally are so imaginative. As a person, personally, I think I am somehow imaginative as well because in, in my classes... I try to be spontaneous, I speak, I talk, I uh, I don't want to say mock, but I make 
fun of somebody or something, uh, not in a way that I could break the person's heart, just just to make the class really enjoyable or bearable, tolerable, so to speak. That's why I try to use my imagination a lot in the classes. Passionate, passionate if you are dedicated to something, if you really love what you are doing, if you really love the, the something that you have, something that you do, you're a passionate person. So these are all, all positive. Let's talk about negative qualities. Eccentric. Eccentric means not normal. It's, I mean, somehow strange, unusual, right? Unusual. Eccentric person. You say hello, the person kills you. I mean, it's a kind of eccentric person. Difficult is so hard so challenging, my favorite, so challenging, these are synonyms, challenging to, uh, how can I say, to make the person happy, to satisfy that person. That's, that person is very difficult. Moody person, you know, all, always like that, you know, angry. I mean, uh, is not in a good mood to talk, to start the conversation even, or to just continue the conversation. Very moody person. Egotistical not ego, like ig, egotistical is a person who has lots of ego, understand? Like a person who is proud of himself or herself, proud of his or her abilities, as if there's only one person in this world, on this planet, who is capable of doing those things that the person is doing. I mean, you are not alone. You should not be egotistical. I mean, we should not be egotistical. But we are human beings. Sometimes we can be egotistical. Now let's go forward. I think unit two has finished. Yeah, unit two finished. Unit three. There's a conversation between two friends about saving money. So we are talking about saving money or how to save up some cash. David and Judy or Jody or Judy, I don't know, are talking. David says, hey, a new entertainment system? What did you do? Strike it rich? Beautiful entertainment system you know like gambling or you know those gambling machines you know uh, prize machines or slots now David is basically kidding here why did you do strike it rich you know strike it rich is a kind of idiom which means that if you get the money acquire get the money quickly overnight very soon very quickly okay it means strike it rich somebody can say did you strike it rich like that, as a kind of kidding, of course. Judy says, I wish, I wish I did, but no, I saved up for it. There is no entertainment system. There is no easy money. There is no quick money. I saved for it, saved up for it. David continues, what? There is no way I could do that. No way, impossible. I cannot do it. Too many bills. So many bills, so many debt to the government that I have to pay. Judy continues and says, I know what you mean. I know. I can, I can understand you. I can sympathize with you. My credit card bills used to be totally out of hand. Used to be in the past. Out of hand. Out of hand means not under control. Out of control. If something goes beyond your control, it is out of your hand, right? David says, really? Are you kidding? Then how did you manage to save up all that cash? How is it possible? How did you manage, means successfully do? One of the meanings of manage means to do something successfully or to be able to do something successfully, right? How did you do that? Judy says, well, I just decided it was time to start living within my means. Beautiful expression. To live within my means. You know, when you have some standard expenses, like, you know, accommodation, water, gas, internet, you know, uh, food. So you have to pay for them. Okay. These are your means. So if you say, I, I try to live within my means. It means that I only use my money, I mean pay, pay for the necessities. 
not for unnecessary things, right? And the rest of the money that remains is being saved up, Judy says. I cut way back on my spending. Cut back means reduce, decrease the amount of usage of something. So, I cut way back on my spending means I really reduce the amount of spending here. I really reduce so much, way back, a lot. David says, wasn't that hard? Wasn't that challenging? Wasn't that difficult? Judy says, kind of, yeah, sort of, sort of. It was really difficult, but I'm glad I did it. I'm happy. I'm really satisfied. I'm content that I did it, right? Express buyer's remorse. Express means to tell. Buyers, okay, a person who buys. Remorse, if you regret. If you regret doing something, if you are so sorry, unhappy, sad about doing something, you, this is your remorse. You are remorseful, right? A says, hey, I heard you got an E-Tech MP3 player. Lucky you. I heard. Means somebody told me or I heard it. I heard the news from somewhere or from someone that you got. Means you bought, buy, bought, get, got, of course. You got an E-Tech is the kind of name, mp3 player, lucky you, you are so fortunate, you are so lucky, I wish I were in your shoes. Well, to tell you the truth, to be honest, frankly speaking, openly speaking, I could kick myself. Kick myself doesn't mean I physically kick myself, no, it means that I'm so sorry about what I did, it's a kind of remorse. I'm regretful for what I did. I wish I didn't buy this MP3 player. These are all of these things are basically paraphrasing, you know it. What do you mean, why? Why do you say so? I had no idea it would be so hard to operate. Means that I didn't know that the functionality of this MP3 player could be really challenging. I didn't know that it could be really difficult to operate, to start using this MP3 player. I thought it is going to be really easy. It's going to be really easy to use this MP3 player, man. It is so difficult because it took me hours to figure out how to download a song. So many hours, so much time to figure out, to realize how to download a kind of song, music, whatnot. What a pain. Oh, I can understand you. I can, I can understand how you feel. It is terrible. You're telling me, had I known I would have gotten a different brand, you're telling me is a kind of expression in a way that when you're really angry, I mean, when, when your friend is trying to calm you down or cheer you up, uh, specifically when you did something wrong, when your friend tries to cheer you up, you know, your friend is basically reminding you your mistake, reminding you what you mistakenly did, right? In that scenario, you're so unhappy or a little bit angry. Uh, in that case, you can say, you're telling me, Misa, don't tell it to me because I know it. Don't remind it to me. Do not remind it to me because I already know it, okay? A little bit anger uh, can be uh, sensed here. Had I known I would have gotten a different brand, so it's a kind of different format of conditional type. I mean, if you remove if, you have to use like this way, like had I known or if I had known, I would have gotten a different brand. Conditional type, three. Now let's talk about some extra examples of Buyer's remorse, I mean expressing buyer's remorse. It costs so much to maintain, memorize it, do not translate word by word. You know, expressions cannot be, generally, cannot be translated word by word. You have to just learn the total, the whole definition or meaning of the sentence. Like, it costs me so much to maintain means it is so expensive to be repaired, you know. 
it takes up so much room. Take up means occupy. It occupies a lot of space. Room means space here. It's so hard to operate. It's so difficult to just function. It's so difficult to start. It's so hard to put together. Put together means assemble. Assemble. iPhone users, just flip your iPhone. Go to the bottom. I mean bottom. And just look at that and read. You might see assembled, designed in California, assembled in Taiwan, assembled in China, assembled in India. Assembled, put together. Put the components, elements together and create a kind of device. It just sits around collecting dust. What a beautiful expression. What a beautiful idiom. You know, there is an object. Nobody uses it. Nobody touches it. Nobody even looks at it. It is somewhere in the basement. Okay. Maybe your grandparents, let's say old radio, old cassette player, I don't know, gramophone or, or some, or maybe how can I say, let's say, yeah, camera or computer, I don't know, something. But today, nobody uses it. In that scenario, in that case, you can say it just sits around collecting dust. Beautiful expression. Just try to remember that. Vocabulary describing different spending habits. Everybody has got a kind of habit, a spending habit, right? Let's just read and learn some new vocabulary, really beautiful vocabulary here. Nouns as well as adjectives. Nouns, a big spender. A big spender is so careless. He or she doesn't consider any time. I mean, the money is meaningless for them. Generally, generally, let's say a good example can be rich people's, rich people's kids. Right? They are really big spender because their fathers, their mothers are so rich. Right? So money is meaningless. Money is nothing. Money, there is no, how can I say, worriness about money. Money just flows. Big spender, just spend it, man. No problem with that. A spendthrift is exactly the same if you spend a lot of money. But you don't have a lot of money. You're poor. If you're poor, you don't have much money, but you spend a lot of money. In that case, you are a spendthrift. A cheap skate or a, or a tight wad. Both of them are the same. Choose one of them. A cheap skate or tight wad. It means there is a person who doesn't feel good spending money. We don't know how much money they have. We don't know how much money he or she has got. But that person doesn't feel good spending it. Understand? Now let's talk about adjectives. Generous. Generous person is very kind, gentle person, right? He or she just helps people. You know, he or she goes out on the street uh, yeah, do, do you want money? Okay, take it. Do you want money? Take it. Do you want money? Take it. Very generous person, right? Cheap or stingy. Very similar, very similar to tight wad, but a little bit different. The difference is cheap or stingy person is really rich person. Everybody knows that the, that, that person is really rich, but he or she doesn't want to spend money. Therefore, we can call them stingy or cheap. Finally, we have thrifty or frugal. They are the same. Choose one of them. You can say I'm thrifty person. I am a thrifty person. I am a frugal person. It means that you don't have a lot of money. You are not rich. You have limited amount of money. You are so economical. You know how to spend, how much to spend. You have strategies, you have money management. In that scenario, you can call yourself a frugal person. Extra vocabulary, charity and investment. Let's just read and learn some new vocabulary if they are new for you. Charity is a kind of helping mechanism, like helping institute. 
charity, like charity organization, helping organization. They gather money, generally money or food or uh, I don't know, some other things to help needy people or people who are in need, poor people in, in other words, right? Contribution means help. Any kind of help can be a contribution. Even an idea in a company, you have a brilliant idea. You have a great constructive idea in a company and you want to help the company to go forward, to be, to update itself, to improve itself, to progress. You need to contribute to the company via your ideas, right? Investment is you put your money generally or your time, your energy, your knowledge into something in order to get some extra money, which is called profit, extra profit, understand? So profit means the money that directly goes to your pocket. This is yours. This is the amount of money that you earn, right? This is called profit. The other word is philanthropist. Philanthropist is a person who is really generous, who helps others, really big help, not a small one, really big help, like goes to a kind of deprived location, really poor location area, and looks at it, maybe becomes emotional or cries and says, you know, these people are miserable. We need to build up some hospitals, some schools, some maybe mosques, churches, some houses for people. But, but these philanthropists are really brilliant, great people because they don't want to be famous. They want to stay hidden. They want to be anonymous. They don't want to be famous. Understand? Unit four. Yeah, there's a kind of conversation between a couple about dressing up or dressing down. So what is dressing up? Dress up means to wear formally. Dressing up means to wear formally. Dress down means the opposite, like to wear casually. Now, Margot is talking, starting the conversation. Don't you think you might be a little overdressed? Overdressed means to be too much formal. Don't you think that you're really formal today? Paul says, I think, why? Yeah, yeah, but I am formal, but what is the problem with that? Marco says, hello, the invitation said casual. Means the invitation doesn't allow to wear formally. You have to wear casually. Paul says, oops, oh my God, you're right, you're right. Okay, I thought we were supposed to get dressed up. We were supposed to means we had to, we must. We must, we had to dress up. Be right back. Be right back means, wait a minute, I go and change my clothes and come back, all right? Paul goes and comes back. Paul says, how is this? What do you think? Now that is a little too casual. No, I don't like it. You know, ladies are so difficult to be pleased. Paul says, Margo! I wish you'd make up your mind. I go crazy all the time. I need to change my clothes. Why do you ask me to change my clothes this much? I don't want to do it. And Margo said, and what is with the baggy pants? You know, baggy means puffy. Ma yes, I forgot to tell you. Makeup means to decide. Please decide what type of thing I, I have to wear. Baggy means puffy, too loose, all right? Opposite of baggy is tight. Paul says, okay, if I change into a polo shirt, you know, and a pair of slacks, you know, slacks are the trousers or pants without the coat. Imagine you have a suit, okay, black suit, white suit, remove the coat, the pants are called slacks. These are not jeans, these are not cotton, Generally, they are called slacks. Paul says, if I change into a polo shirt and a pair of slacks, will that work? Is it okay for you? Margo says, perfect. Absolutely. Abs it is absolutely okay. Now let's talk about 
commenting on fashion and style. There's someone on the street, you and your friends are commenting on his or her fashion or style, right? These two ladies are talking. A and B. A says, check out that guy over there. Check out. Check out that guy over there means, please, I mean, look at that person. Look at that guy over there. Which guy? Where? 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 Which guy? Over there. The one on the cell phone. The one who is talking on the cell phone. Can you believe what he's wearing? I cannot believe it. It is so ridiculous. What do you mean? Why? Why do you say so? I mean, what is wrong with it? Don't you think that shirt is a little flashy? You know, flashy, flash, flash. Like attention getting, right? Flashy means attention getting. But negatively, not positively. Negatively, right? B says, well, yeah, the colors are pretty loud means very. Pretty here means very. Very loud means very colorful, very bright, let's say, or hot. But that's what's in his style because this is, I mean, I mean, the trend is like that. Everybody is like trendy. If you want to be tr trendy, you have to be flashy these days. That's why. So it's totally normal and okay. Now let's go forward and talk about describing fashion and style, right? Describing fashion and style, attractive. Fashionable or stylish means modern, fashionable person or stylish person. In a style, trendy or hot, okay? The word hot is slang, is not standard English, okay? It is slang or street talk. It means temporarily popular. It is not forever, maybe a month, maybe a maximum a year, but next year it is going to be uh, changed, right? Elegant or chic means a good taste. If you have a good taste, you know the colors, you know the patterns, you know the combinations. You can combine these things very professionally or beautifully. You are chic or you are elegant. And finally, we have a striking. A striking is surprising. You surprise others with your style. But this is totally positive. A good example for this can be, you know, the Oscar Award or Golden Globe Awards. Uh, where you know actors and actresses are so beautiful or so handsome and they wear so chic so elegantly and uh, in i mean they surprise you i mean positively uh, generally positively they you can you can call them you know striking now let's talk about unattractive it is so obvious old fashioned or out of style very very old fashioned or out of style Tacky, poor taste, you know, the person doesn't know the combination, doesn't know the pattern, doesn't know which color goes with which color. I mean, he or she is not good at that. Flashy, we talked about it. Attention getting, attention getting, but negative, in a negative way or negatively. Understand? Shocking means offensive, like what? Like that, you know, your jaw drops. Your jaw drops, like what? This is totally opposite of striking. Striking, positive. Shocking, negative. Do you remember Lady Gaga with the meat dress or meat outfit? Uh, for some people, it could be totally shocking because they cannot digest it. They cannot understand. They cannot uh, be okay with it, maybe. But... It's kind of an example for that. Unit 5. Don and Kyle are talking. Pay attention to this. Don starts. Hey, Kyle. So how is the big city treating you? Beautiful. How is the big city treating you? Means how is your life going on in this big city? This is advanced level of saying hi and how are you? How are you? How is your life? How is it going? How is your life treating you? How is this big city treating you? How is your new company treating you? How is your new friend, new roommate, classmate, colleague treating you? Right? Beautiful expression. Kyle said, funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. Another expression. It means, it is so obvious. Why are you asking? Everybody knows that this is big city 
and I am not happy in, in here. Big city doesn't treat me really well. Why are you asking? Funny you should ask. Don't ask it, please. Not great. Now says, what do you mean? Why? Why are you saying so? Well, on my way here, I'm, I'm crossing this street and this guy in an SUV turns the corner and almost runs me over. Can you believe it? This is one of the examples of, of big cities. So, Kyle says, I am crossing the street from this point to that point. And that, that or this, yes, th this guy or that guy on an SUV. What is SUV? This guy. On an SUV just turns the corner. The driver doesn't realize that there is a pedestrian. There is a kind of person who is walking on the street. He is not focused enough. He was almost running me over. You know, run somebody over. This is somebody. This is the car. Car hits the person. Person falls. I mean, runs over. Runs over. Like that. Are you serious? What? Really? Kyle says, yeah. The driver was in such a big hurry, he didn't even notice. Notice means realize. He didn't see me. I just can't keep up with the pace here. Beautiful expression. Beautiful expression. To keep up with somebody or something or someplace. I mean somewhere. To keep up with the pace. Pace means speed. Imagine this person, this city, this, how can I say, computer, car, whatever, is really fast and this is you behind, right? The, I mean, the city goes really fast. You are really fast also, but you cannot be at the same level with the city. The city is really fast. In that scenario, you can say, I cannot, or I can. I cannot keep up well with the city, like that. Don says, well, you do have to learn to stay on your toes. In, in the city, to stay on your toes, you know, fingers, hands, the fingers of the feet are called toes. So to stay on toes, like physically staying on, on your toes, no. This is a kind of idiom. It means to be focused or to be prepared, to be prepared and focused, understand, concentrated. You have to be focused in the city because the city is really big. Any kind of negativity can happen, right? God says, it really gets to me sometimes. It makes me unhappy. Sometimes it demotivates me. It makes me unhappy. I'm not really happy with that. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. I don't think that time comes in the future that I would be happy. I cannot get used to it. Why? Because I guess I am just a country boy at heart. Country boy. Country girl, country man, country woman, uh, a person who lives in a country, not in city or big cities, let's say. He or she lives in a countryside, in a village. Like that. By heart means by default, fundamentally, basically. So fundamentally, he says, Kyle says, I'm a country person. I'm a village person, not a city person. I cannot keep on... With the pace in here, I can't politely ask someone not to do something. A and B are talking. A says, do you mind my smoking here? What a beautiful question. What a, what a beautiful phrase, actually. Do you mind my smoking? After do you mind, we need ING. Do you mind my writing here? Do you mind my eating here? Do you mind my talking here? Generally, smoking. Do you mind my smoking here? Actually, smoking kind of bothers me. You know, this is a really polite way to disagree with somebody or it is really a polite way to ask somebody not to do something. I hope I didn't break your heart. Not at all. Of course not. Never ever. Yeah. I can step outside. What a beautiful word. A step as a verb means like use your feet to walk, like walk out. Walk outside of the environment. I mean, the, that, that, that area. 
that's very considerate of you. It means that you are a very considerate person. You are a very uh, kind person, gentle person. You understand. You are an understanding person, modern person, civilized person, good person. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking whether is it possible to smoke in here or not. I'm really thankful for that. Now, different ways to soften or soften an objection. Objection means protest. Not just f with fighting or quarreling or arguing, nagging. You know, with a soft voice. Soft. Gentle. For example, I hope that's not a problem. I hope you don't mind it. I hope it's okay. I hope it's all right. I don't mean to inconvenience you. What a beautiful expression, man. Memorize it. I don't mean to inconvenience you. I don't want to bother you, it means. Memorize them. Beautiful. Really beautiful. You can take a picture of this. Social responsibility. Our responsibility in the society, right? These are some of the most popular examples. We have different ways to perform community service. Community means society. Service means something that you do as a help. Perform means to act. Number one, beautify your town. Beauty, noun. Beautiful, adjective. Beautify, verb. How to make your town, village, environment, company, school, country, city, beautiful. How? By... Let's say planting some trees, planting some trees, planting some flowers, like that. Clean up litter. Litter means garbage, but not big ones, small ones. Imagine somebody is drinking soda, I mean glass. Then all of a sudden something happens, the glass just falls down. And you say, what? In a kind of slow motion, the, the, the glass is falling down. In, an, in a kind of slow motion, you know, hits the ground and shatters. What a beautiful word. Shatter or shatter means to break into small pieces, small pieces of glasses, right? Those small pieces of glasses are called, for example, litter. Or somebody is smoking, I mean, he or she finishes it, and there's a cigarette filter or cigar filter. Then what happens? The person just throws the cigarette filter and the cigarette filter just flips and falls down. So those small garbages are called litter. So we need to clean up litter. Donate your time. Donate means give. Give something for free. Give your time for somebody freely. Imagine Municipalities, the mayor, do you know mayor? Mayor is the manager of the city. Municipality is a kind of building that the mayor, like the president, the manager of the city, works there. That area is called municipality, right? Municipality, like that. So you give your time to the municipality to the people in the municipality right next one volunteer you help the mayor you help the president you help the manager for free you don't need you don't require any money in return you don't need anything you don't ask for it of course of course you need it maybe but you don't ask for it this is called volunteer finally Donate your organ. Donate your blood. The most cliche one. You give your blood to needy people. This is donation. But of course it's not organ, but yes, it's part of our body. Donating our blood. Donating a kidney. Donating, I don't know, brain, heart, some, I don't know, some other organs maybe. So these are community services. And we need to Perform these community services. Unit 6. There's a conversation between two friends at the zoo. Listen really carefully. 
Alicia starts, I can't believe I let you talk me into coming here. I really have a problem with Zeus. Beautiful sentence. I can't believe. Means that I don't, I don't understand how did I let you persuade me, persuade me coming to the zoo. Talk somebody into doing something or into something means to persuade, to encourage, to motivate somebody to do something. Opposite of talk someone into is talk someone out of, right? Out of. I really have a problem with zoos. What does it mean? I think it must be kind of psychological problem. Like, you know, if you don't feel okay or if you feel uneasy with something, you know, you can say, I really have a problem with that. Then says, come on, come on. These guys have got it made. These guys have got it made means these people like the personnel or staff, those people who are working at the zoo, just paved the way. I mean, made everything ready for the animals. Why are you so worried about them? They are well cared for. It means that these animals are well cared for. Like uh, the personnel, the people who are working at the zoo, right? care for these animals take care of these animals actually right no worries they are healthy they've got plenty of food and they are not hungry why are you so worried about this there is no problem with that alicia says you could say the same thing about people in prisons good point people in prisons are healthy there is no problem they have plenty of food but where is the freedom where is the freedom? What about the freedom? Liberty. I hate seeing animals cooped up in cages. Coop up. A good phrasal verb. Means captured and imprisoned inside a cage or prison itself. I hate seeing them. Ben says, you think animals are any happier in the wild? Really? Do you think that animals are feeling good in the wild, like always hungry, there's no food, they have to fight for it, running from some bigger animals who are basically trying to eat them. Yeah, they're always running. I mean, animals are always running, trying to catch food, but try not to be a food for others, for, for bigger animals. Yeah, Ben is right. Alicia says, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You know, generally when ladies say, I don't know, it means that, yeah, you're right, but I don't want to agree with you. You're right, but I don't want to agree with you. That's why she says, she said, I don't know. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah. Ben says, just look at that tiger over there. Where else could you see such a beautiful animal up close? Where else? There's a tiger, you know, magnificent tiger over there. And you go so close to the tiger to see it. Where else could you see it? Where else? You cannot. You can't. It's impossible because the tiger can really eat you up. Another expression is up close. Means from very, very close distance. You know, there's a fact in photography like close-up photography like there are some specific or special lenses, you can go directly toward a small subject, really, really small subject to magnify that. On Google type close up eyes or close up photography and eye. You can be mesmerized by the result, by the pictures. Alicia says, yeah, you're right about that. He is magnificent. He is brilliant. Amazing, right? Vocabulary. Ways animals are used or treated. Very debatable, discussable slide here, right? They are kept in zoos. You know, controversial topics or debatable topics are those topics that there is no 
specific answer. There's no one true or correct answer, true angle, looking at that subject matter, right? Everybody uh, who has who has some some points or who has a point, let's say, can be right, can be correct. In other words, all of these examples here in this slide can be good, can be bad. It depends on you how you're looking at the subject matter from which angle you're looking at, right? So for some people, keeping, I mean, keeping animals in zoos can have positivity. For some people, it has negativity. Yeah. They are used for medical research. It can be good. It can be bad. You have to talk about it. They are killed for their hides and fur. Hides and fur are skin. Skin of the animal. You know, the skin of the creature, animal, human. Now, for animal, we have two types of skins. One, hides. One, fur. Fur means hairy, like a kind of skin which has hair. Hairy skin, like bear, fox. Height, that's a skin without hair, like, for example, crocodile, snake, that type of skin. They are trained to perform in circuses. They have been educated. They have been trained to perform in the circuses. People go there and watch their performances, and then people are getting entertained. They are raised for fighting. Raised means, you know, when the, uh, the animal is very small, there's a chick, I mean for the rooster here. The chick grows, becomes bigger and bigger. And when the chick becomes a kind of adult rooster, you can say, I raised this. I am the owner of this rooster and I raised this rooster. So they are raised for fighting. They're raised to fight with another rooster. Next, they are trained to help people with disability. People who are disabled, like they cannot see, they cannot walk, they cannot basically talk, they cannot hear. So some animals can help, can be helpful. Next one. They are slaughtered for food. Slaughter means to kill violently. To kill violently. So they are killed violently, cruelly for food. To be, to be, to become food for, for hum, human beings. Yeah. Finally, they are used for racing. Again, competition, you know. Human beings try to find some entertainment or gambling. They put money they gamble on a specific horse. So the horse should just go faster in order for the owner or for the gambler to, to earn some extra money. So all of these uh, examples are really controversial. I'm not going to express my own ideas. You need to talk about it. So maybe in the classroom we can talk about this, right? All right, let's continue. Conversation. Discuss the benefits of certain pets. Pet, some, some specific, certain here means specific, some special pets can have some benefits, some advantages, some positive points. Let's see. A and B. A says, I've been considering getting an iguana for a pet. Again, beautiful. I've been considering is fixed. Just try to memorize it. I've been considering. I've been considering. After that, Put an ing to the to a verb, and then change the sentence. Like, you know what? I've been considering buying a new house. For example, I've been considering traveling to another country. I've been considering eating that pizza. I've been considering buying some new suit, some new clothes, outfits, and and and. Beautiful. Iguana. Do you know iguana? You know. What? Are you out of your mind? 
What are you talking about? I have heard that they are filthy. Filthy means dirty. Messy, you know, they make mess. They are dirty, unclean, something like that. Actually, that is a misconception. Conception, misconception. Misconception is a kind of wrong or false belief among people. Imagine here in this example, people generally think that iguanas, because iguanas look strange maybe, I don't know, they look dirty or filthy, but in reality, they are really clean. So that belief is a misconception. I hope you understood. Iguanas are very clean and make great pets. They can make great pets means they can be really friendly. They are harmless, like that. In what way? In what way means how? How? Well, for one thing, they are very intelligent. Or from one point of view, from one angle, they are very intelligent, means clever. And believe it or not, beautiful, believe it or not, it means it is up to you to believe it or not believe it. I believe it, but it is up to you whether to believe it or not. Believe it or not, I find them beautiful. They are really pretty and beautiful. What do you think about this? Describing pets. Some extra vocabulary. Positive trait. Trait means feature. Adorable. Lovely, cute, charming, right? Affectionate, very kind, gentle, friendly. Gentle or good-natured. They are harmless. They won't harm you. They won't damage you. Low maintenance means it is easy it is easy to take care of them. You don't have to pay a lot of money or uh, spend a lot of time taking care of that specific animal or let's say pet. Loyal or devoted. They are really loving. They love you. They are dedicated to you. Whatever you say, they do it. Whatever you want, they do it. Right? Because they love you. They are so loyal to you. Negative traits. Aggressive. You know, very fearful. Aggressive. Not friendly. Costly. Very expensive. Expensive, man. In Dubai, some rich people have, I mean, keep lions, tigers as pets. Is it easy? It is so difficult. Plus, costly. Every day you have to give them meat. People do not have meat for themselves to eat. But you need to, you have to give the pet some meat to eat. Every day. This is costly. Destructive. They destroy things very easily. You know, they scratch the wall. They tear the uh, paper. I don't know. They destroy wood, even metal or something. Objects inside the, the house or, you know, yard. Filthy, as we talked. Dirty or unclean. High maintenance means very difficult. Very expensive. And time-consuming animal to take care of. So low maintenance, high maintenance. Final slide. Now let's talk about describing character traits. Extra vocabulary, right? Mostly you can use these adjectives, these vocabulary for human beings as well. So clever means intelligent. Gullible means you can easily deceive them. You can easily lie to them. Mean means they, they are not friendly. They really want to harm you. They have that feeling to harm you, but they are looking for a specific moment to attack or to destroy something or to show their anger like that. Next one is selfish. You know, we have selfish, we have vain. They are so similar, but slight differences. Selfish is someone, specifically an animal, who cares only for itself. 
like he or she or it doesn't want to doesn't like to share anything you give food they want to eat themselves by themselves only only themselves not with other pets vain is really proud of its own beauty its own ability achievement this kind of stuff both of them are very similar like egotistical like very proud of themselves but a little bit different sincere is uh, related to being honest like inside and outside are the same whatever you say whatever you think you say it or whatever you say you think it right you know wise is a kind of animal which can make really good decisions right good logical reasonable decisions Unit 7 in the heaven. Sound bites. Let's talk about a couple talking about ads in a catalog. What is catalog? Catalog is a kind of, you know, magazine which is full of ads or advertisements, generally with, with great pictures, high, with high quality of pictures of products, uh, of a company or, or whatnot. Now Bob and Ann are talking. Bob says, I think it's about time I got myself one of these electric massage chairs. What a beautiful opening. I think, I guess, I assume that it's about time, it is the right time actually, that I got myself one of these electric massage chairs. You know, massage chairs, you know, uh, basically when, whenever you go to shopping centers, you can definitely find them. They are they are operating by some coins like you insert a couple of coins inside them and then it tries to massage you for a couple of minutes let's say Anna says these are couples actually Anna says what on earth for means why how come why do you want to spend this amount of money on a massage chair why what is the point are you serious Bob says, yeah, it would be just nice to have one. That's all. There is no other reason or, you know, logic behind that. And says, sounds like a waste of money to me. Waste of money, massage chair. What do you need that for? Don't they have anything useful in there? Where? In the catalog. Bob gets angry a little bit and says, see for yourself. As long as you don't you do not listen to me as long as you do not pay attention to my idea or my desire so just take the catalog and look it for yourself just look it for yourself and says now here's something I'd like to get my hands on get my hands on means that to test it to touch it to try it a self-watering flower pot this is a flower pot in the picture as you as you can see in the picture self-watering like automatic is a kind of flower pot which automatically waters itself you understand Bob says you have got to be kidding me why what do you need that technological device for a self-watering flower pot? Do you think that is really useful? Really? And says, no, I am not. I am not kidding. I am so serious about that. I think one of these could come in really handy. Come in handy means be practical and useful. So Anne says, one of these self-watering flower pots can be really useful and practical. Imagine you're a tourist and you go somewhere and th there's a local friend, let's say, and he or she is trying to advise you, I mean, give you some advice about where to go, where not to go, how to bargain, I mean, what not to say, what to say, blah, blah, blah. Now, A starts and says, I think I'd like to pick up a few souvenirs before I go back home. Any suggestions? So pick up. Do you remember this pickup from previous levels? Like I think B1 level pickup doesn't mean to hold something. It is one of the meaning. Here another meaning of pickup means to buy something very quickly without any plan, without any thinking. 
or spending too much time deciding what to buy. This, this is called pickup. Souvenir is some inexpensive item or object which whenever you look at it, it reminds you your traveling, your voyage, your journey to that specific location. Generally, generally, very cliche, object can be the magnets. You remember the magnets? I mean, on the magnet, uh, magnetic, you know, object, there's a kind of picture of the whole area, the whole city, or the symbolic place of the city, the most important one. Then you attach it or mount it on your uh, fridge. And then whenever you look at it, you start to remember your memories. That is called souvenir. Before I go back home, like go back home country, any suggestions? Do you offer something? Do you, do you have any suggestions? What do you have in mind means what do you want to really buy? What type of, let's say, what type of gifts or souvenirs do you want to buy? Nothing in particular. Particular means special. Nothing specific. Nothing special. Just something to help me remember my trip. Again, a kind of paraphrasing of the word souvenir, right? Well, the central market would be a good bet. A good bet is a kind of expression here. It means that specific market, like central market, uh, basically offers, offers best prices. I mean, the cheapest prices. Cheapest prices around uh, the city, like that. So that central market would be a good bet if you want to find a bargain. Bargain means discount. When you negotiate the price, when you negotiate the price with the seller, with the shopkeeper or shop assistant, negotiator. That is called bargain or haggling over the price. The same, bargaining or haggling over the price. So A says, can you haggle over the prices? Can you bargain? Of course, yeah, this is my job. Why not? Let's try. Okay, let's describe low prices then high prices. Listen really carefully. A good deal, a bargain, a great offer, a steal. So all of these, you know, expressions are in one category, which is like low prices. Do not try to translate word by word. Do not try to memorize word by word. Try to put them in a category and look at the intensity or the level of the importance through today's lesson. For example, a good deal has got one exclamation mark. Bargain two exclamation marks. A great offer three and a steal, a steal four. Step by step, the level increases, right? A good deal is okay, good, not expensive, not too cheap. It's a, it is okay. A bargain, a little bit cheaper. A great offer, a great offer is really cheap. A steal is almost free. It is almost free. Now let's talk about describing high prices. I mean, the opposite one. Again, through the exclamation mark. No bargain, a bit steep, a ripoff, a highway robbery. A highway robbery. Now, no bargain means, you know, it is fixed. Whatever the price is, that figure, that number is fixed. There's no bargain, $100, $100, not a penny, more, not a penny, less, no bargain. A bit steep means, you know, man, you're you are selling this item much more expensive compared to other markets. So your prices are a little bit or a bit steep. Steep means high, understand? Everybody sells this item for $100. You sell it for 120, for example. A ripoff. A ripoff means really, really 
uh, expensive. For example, everybody sells it again for $100. That specific seller or let's say market sells it for 200. What? A rip off? Highway robbery. Highway robbery means the, the seller basically robs your whole money. Again, $100 is a normal tag, like normal price. That specific seller sells it for, let's say, $300, $500. That is a highway robbery. Highway robbery. So try to memorize all of these vocabulary and expressions through the category, like level by level, rather than just translating or trying to memorize the definition or meanings of the phrases word by word. Okay? Let's go forward. Shopping expressions. Listen carefully. Browse. You know, everybody has got a, uh, some shopping, uh, let's say, habits uh, or the way that the, the person is trying to buy something uh, is somehow different. So through this vocabulary, we can describe people's shopping, shopping behavior or shopping, let's say, method, let's say. For example, browsing, you know, you're in a shopping center, you don't intend to buy something, you just want to see, you just want to walk around, you just look at the items, look and check it, but you are not intending to buy that specific item. This is called browsing. Browse, like Internet Explorer or Google Chrome is a kind of browser, right? A kind of browser that you can browse what's going on the internet. Bargain hunt or bargain hunter. The person, you know, waits. Waits, waits, waits very carefully. And whenever he or she sees and hears some bargain, one, two, three, attack! Attack goes and hunts the bargain, uses the opportunity, uses the opportunity, the chance. Window shop, window shop, you know? There is a shop and the window is generally out of glass so that you can see through the window, see inside the market or, or the shop through the window. And the seller puts some uh, some patterns, some mannequins, some clothes outfit or some items behind the window and you're a window shopper. You just walk around and look at the items. You're outside of the window. You're, look at the, you're looking at the items out from outside. Again, most probably you're not intending to buy anything. You just try to look and check, right? Next one, haggling over the prices or bargaining they are the same okay you're negotiating you're negotiating uh, the price or the prices with the seller the seller gives you some i mean uh, prices and you say this is too much uh, please go down go down i need some discount so this is called bargaining or nego negotiating or let's say haggling over the price shop around or comparison shop shop around or Comparison shop, they are the same. You want to buy an item, and this item is available everywhere. And you, you don't want to pay too much, so that you go to, you enter to every single market, every single shop, and ask for the price, and then write it down. Maybe, I don't know. Finally, you decide you notice and decide that, okay, that specific market, that specific shop has a good bet, nice prices. You enter the shop and buy that specific item uh, with, with the best prices. I mean, cheaper than others, let's say. Understand? This is shop around or comparison shop. You compare the shops or the prices of, of different uh, markets. You know, basically you are comparing the, the prices uh, of the specific, basically, item uh, uh, throughout the whole 
other markets inside the shopping center, right? Now persuading someone to buy something. All of these vocabulary are, are somehow business vocabulary, like you're persuading people. They are almost, I mean, synonym, but let me explain, give some uh, extra information. Endorse, endorse means to use, to use a kind of famous person uh, in your advertisement so that you are using the influence of that, um, let's say, famous person in order to sell your product. Next one is promote. Promoting means to to um, advertising, to advertising your product through different ways. There are so many different ways to promote your uh, products or items, right? For example, it says here, make sure people know about a new product in order to persuade them to buy it. Imagine you have, you, you, you are selling so many items, but your customers are unaware of the new items. You have to let them know uh, or be aware of new products. They don't know. You have to tell them. So this is called promoting, one of the ways actually. Imply, again, to tell, to talk about the product. You say, you know, this product is original and it has certification. This has documents, blah, 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 blah. I love it. My customers are really happy with that. And, and uh, you are using your uh, speaking strategies, speaking, let's say, power, in order to persuade your customers to buy your product. This is called imply. Prove you are not talking so much, but you are proving it through documentation, through videos, through some uh, evidences, some certifications. Understand? Like that. So these are different ways to persuade your customers to buy something. Unit eight, there's a good conversation about relationships between Teresa and Bettina. Teresa says, did you hear that Sam and Margaret got back together? Did you hear that? There's a kind of news and gossiping. Get back, got back together. Like uh, they had some issues, some problems before. They were fighting with each other. Then they separated. They split up. Then uh, their relationship uh, is improving and then they came back to, together to each other, to one another, and then they try to continue their relationship. Bedina says, wow, I didn't even know they had split up. Split up means separate, break up. Break up, separate, or split up. It shows you how out of touch I am. Out of touch, out of touch means not aware of something you don't have any ideas you don't have any news information about your environment about everything this is being out of touch Teresa continues and says well they had this major falling out about two months ago and they separated but it looks like they have patched things up great a lot of expressions here major means important serious big the big falling out. Fallout means big, I mean, argument, quarrel, you know, like fighting, basically verbal, verbal fighting. About two months ago, and then, and, and they separated, like break up, break up, broke up. But it looks like they have patched things up. Patch up things or patch things up means to improve something, to solve the problems, to improve the relationship. Good. Bettina says, good. They are a nice couple. I hope things work out for them. Good news. Thank you for that. I hope things work out for them. You know, work out has lots of meanings because it's a kind of phrasal verb. Work out here means to improve, to improve something, to solve a problem, let's say. Okay. Then they switch the conversation. This is ladies' ability to switch from, I mean, to jump from this conversation to that conversation, from that conversation to that conversation very quickly and easily. Men cannot do it. Why? There's a kind of scientific fact about it. Maybe, I mean, later I can talk about it. Teresa says, me too. So how is your family? Talk about your family. Not bad, but we have been having some trouble with our son. 
We have been having some trouble. What a beautiful sentence. We have been means continues. The action continues. Some trouble like problem. Problems actually. With our son. What? Really? What kind of trouble? Why? Well, he's been acting up in school. Act up in school means to be a bad student, to be a kind of troublemaker, to generally be impolite, disrespectful, let's say. For example, you know, talking back to his teachers, example number one, not doing his homework, example number two. These are examples of acting up in school. Teresa says, Eric, I can't believe it. He is always, he has always been, he has always been so well behaved. He has always been a really good, polite, student, polite boy. Bettina says, well, I told him he has grounded until he shapes up. Grounded means punished, not physically generally. Like when you ban or when you limit somebody from doing something, you are grounding that person. Generally, it's a kind of parenting mechanism, parenting strategy that uh, is really discussable and controversial. Uh, grounding the child, specifically the boy, for example, until he shapes up. Shape up means to improve his behavior until he improves his behaviors. I mean, he, until he becomes a good person, a good boy. Like, so these are examples of grounding the child. For example, no movies, no games, no trips to the mall, no PlayStation, no pizza, no nothing. These are grounding. Teresa says, smart move. I like that. Nice idea. Intelligent, brilliant idea. Good. Eric is a good boy, good kid, but you don't want him to turn into a troublemaker. Troublemaker? Is a person who makes troubles, who makes problem. A villain, a kind of mean person, right? Another conversation, A and B, A. So we are talking about discussing parents and teen issues. Issue means subject or problems. A starts. What do you think parents should do if they are teenage kids Start smoking. A really good question, a very controversial, discussable question. What can a parent do? Well, I hate to say it, but means I really don't want to say this because if I say that, most probably I am going to break your heart. But I hate saying it, but I have to say it. But there is not much they can do. They can't do anything about it. A says, why is that? Why do you think so? Well, teenagers are out of the house most of the day, most of the time. Yeah, they're out of, out of the house. So parents can't control everything they do. You cannot control them. I suppose, yeah, I believe so. But they can ground them if they don't shape up. A kind of very classic strategy. They can ground them. They can punish them, limit them, if they do not shape up, if they do not be a good kid, right? Now let's talk about examples of bad behaviors. Acting up at school, as we talked about it. Staying out late without permission. They are not asking for permission, but they are staying outside of the house and come home late. Being rude and disrespectful. Rude, impolite, and disrespectful, not respectful. Becoming a troublemaker, like becoming a villain, becoming a mean person, impolite, disrespectful person, right? Now let's talk about, I mean, describing parents and teen behavior. First, parents. Parents can sometimes be too strict. Too strict means limitation. Some rules. The house has got some rules and the kids should follow and obey the rules. Rule number one, two, three, four, five. The opposite version is called lenient, easygoing, no problem. Father, yes, I want to kill my friend. Okay, that's all right, go ahead. So it's a kind, 
this is called <laughs> so this is called lenient, right? And also we have overprotective. Protective is okay. Overprotective is too much. Mothers, generally mothers, can sometimes be overprotective. They are protecting their kids so much, disturbingly a lot, disturbingly a lot, right? Now let's talk about teenagers. Teenagers can sometimes be rebellious, rebellion, rebel, rebellion, rebellious as an adjective. A person who really wants to rebel, to be against someone or something, who wants to protest, who wants to be uh, in, op in opposition to someone or something, right? Spoiled, a spoiled child. Really terrible thing that I can see nowadays. The child doesn't understand that the money is not easy to be earned. The parents cannot earn the money so easily. They don't have lots of money. Uh, but they are basically pointing at the most expensive thing. For example, the most expensive thing uh, inside the market. And they are expecting the parents to buy that object, that item for them. Without considering the economical or financial level of the parents. This is really terrible example of the modern society, unfortunately. Finally, the teenager can be disrespectful, not paying attention, not listening to older or elderly people. Disrespectful. Unit 9. There's a conversation about a well-known mystery. Well-known means famous. A famous, mysterious story. Victor and Patty are talking. Victor says, I saw the most fascinating TV program about Bigfoot last night. I saw, I watched yesterday. The most fascinating TV program, TV show. Fascinating means mesmerizing, excellent. Okay. About Bigfoot last night. Patty says, Bigfoot? Don't tell me you buy that story. Buy the story means to believe the story. A very beautiful expression. Victor continues, You're such a skeptic. Skeptic means a person who questions a lot, who is so suspicious, who is uh, not accepting things easily, asking so many questions, and tries to, tries to find some false ideas. Like that. It's called skeptic. Who has to say those things don't exist? Who is saying so? How do you say that? How else would you explain all those sightings over the years? Sighting means the thing that you can see it. Basically a kind of documentation, a trace or image, picture, I don't know, some sources of uh, validation like that over the years means throughout the years for so many years patty says okay they could have been gorillas not bigfoot gorillas yeah pa victor says gorillas in the united states really i don't think so i don't think so there is no question means totally i am totally sure there is no question Bigfoot is real. Bigfoot is real. I, there is no question about it. Don't talk about it. Patty says, get out of here. Get out of here. It means I don't believe you. Come on. Don't say get out of here to everybody. Say it to your friends, to your best friends. But of course, if you change your tonation, I mean intonation, it can change the meaning. You cannot say, boss, get out of here. You cannot say that. Then boss says, you're fired. You're fired. Understand? But you can say to your friends, get out of here, man. I don't believe you. What are you talking about? What are you, ta are you stupid? There is no such thing as Bigfoot. There isn't. 
Bigfoot is not real. You have such a wild imagination. Your imagination is so wild. It is not real. Which means, so Victor says, you would change your mind if you had seen that program. You didn't see it, so you don't believe it. I wish you could watch it. Then you would definitely believe it. Patty continues. The only way I change my mind is if I saw one of them with my own two eyes. Means that she wants to say that I have to see one of them in real life. That is the only way that I can believe that Bigfoot is real. Seeing is believing as far as I'm concerned. What a beautiful expression. Seeing is believing. Eating is believing. Listening, hearing is believing. Reading is believing. You can change that. You can modify that. As far as I'm concerned. As far as I know. Yeah, you can take a picture if you want. Speculate about the out of the ordinary. Speculate means to guess, to predict, to imagine. Imagine and guess. Anticipate. A starts. I wonder where Stacy is. She said she'd be here by 10. Where is she? I wonder where she is. Because she told me, she told us that she would be here by 10, but she, has, she hasn't come yet. Where is she? B says, do you think something happened? Really? Beats me. What a beautiful expression. Beats me means I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, I'm sure it's nothing. I'll bet she is stuck in traffic. She, she got stuck in traffic. She is stuck in traffic. Both of them are okay. Nothing has happened to her. Most probably, she has stuck in traffic. This is the only reason. B says, why else would she be late? What is the other reason that she is late? Is there any other reason for, for her to be late? I can't imagine. I can't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So ladies, by default, have really powerful senses comparing to men. Really powerful instincts. Men are not good at that. Now let's talk about ways to say I don't know. Different ways to say I don't know. You can memorize one or two which you are feeling so good with and keep using them in order to be fluent or in order to be fluently using them. For example, beats me. I can't imagine. I don't have a clue. Very popular. I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. You got me. Who knows? These are the same thing. These are the same thing. These are synonyms for the word, for the phrase, beats me or I don't know. Ways to express certainty. How can you talk about certainty? We have four categories here. If you are very certain, if you are so certain, so sure, you can say, clearly he is not coming. It's obvious he is not coming. There is no question he is not coming. If you are almost certain, most likely someone found it. Probably someone found it. I'll bet someone found it. A little bit, almost certain. Now somewhat certain. Somewhat certain. I guess she has lost. I imagine she is lost. I suppose she is lost. Not certain. If you are not certain about it, maybe he found. Maybe he forgot. It's possible he forgot. It could be he forgot, right? Now let's talk about suffixes. What is suffix? It comes after a 
verb and it changes the whole role of the word. Prefix is a word, is a short or small word which comes before the verb. For example, believe is a verb. A bull is a suffix. Means can. Believable. A believable story. A story that you can believe it. Debate as a verb means discuss. Debatable. You can debate it. Provable. You can prove it. Questionable. You can question it. You can ask question. Unsolvable. This is really interesting. This solve is a verb. This word actually has a prefix as well as a suffix. On, which negates the verb unsolve. You cannot solve it. You cannot. Impossible to solve. A bull means can. So unsolvable. You cannot solve it. Unit 10. There's a conversation between two close friends at the office. Okay. Ed and Ken. Ed says, I can't take it anymore. This job is really getting to me. Getting to me means makes me angry, unhappy, demotivated. I can't take it anymore. I cannot bear it, tolerate it. Kim says, hey, sounds like you could use a break. Means stop coming to work. Go on a holiday. Use a break. Have a break. Are you kidding? I am up to my ears in paperwork. I cannot go on a holiday. Too much work. Up to, up to my ear means full, full of. Kim says, when was the last time you took some time off? Take off some time. Like take off time means to go on a holiday or to, to have a break, to stop working. When was the last time? Come to think of it, it's a really good expression. It means if you are, I mean, there's a conversation, the topic goes this way. And all of a sudden, your friend, your colleague, some, your partner asks you another question, which is not related to the topic, right? Then you say, come to think of it. If you ask me to think about your question, come to think of that very quickly right now. It's been over a year. I was supposed to take off a few weeks in January, but it just got too busy around here. I was supposed to in January. I must have gone on holiday in January, but I didn't. Because the office became so busy. Kim says, then it sounds like a little R&R &R would do you some good. R&R &R is a kind of uh, slang expression, which means rest and relaxation. For example, you can say, Right now, I need some R&R. &R. Right now, I need some rest and relaxation. So, a little R&R &R would do you some good. Would do you some good. Can make you feel better. You're right. And anyway, I can always bring my laptop along and catch up on my work. I can take my laptop and bring it Bring it along, which means that I can bring my laptop, carry it with myself. Okay? And then catch up on my work. To catch up on your work means you continue the work, the unfinished work from yesterday, from the past time. Yesterday you were supposed to finish that job, that task, but you couldn't. Due to so many things like lack of time, lack of motivation, lack of power or strength. Today, you have to finish that unfinished task first, then continue. This is called to catch up on my work. Kim says, listen, leave the laptop at home. Don't bring it here. Leave it at home. You need to just take it easy for a while. Take it easy, man. Calm down. Relax. For a while means for some time. 
So explain the benefits of leisure activities. Explain, tell me. I mean, give uh, information. Talk about the benefits, advantages of leisure activities. Those activities which is which are not work, which are not project, which are not serious. They should not be serious. Actually, you do them to feel good, to feel better, like hobby. A. I have taken up go recently. Do you play? I have taken up go. Take up something, which means that to be interested in something. So I have taken up go recently. It means that these days I improved, I developed actually, I developed an interest in go. Go has been written in capital letters. So that's why the word go that is not is not the action verb that is a noun that is a uh, how can i say proper noun go is a name do you play it go is here as you can see in the picture no i have never heard of it what a beautiful answer i have never heard of it hey hey have you have you have you watched that movie which movie that movie blah 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 no i have never heard of it have you have you um, played that game no, I have never heard of it. Have you read that book? No, I have never heard of it. What a beautiful, you know, expression, right? To uh, memorize and remember. What's Go? Can you explain? It's a great Japanese game. It's a kind of Japanese game. Great one. Kind of like chess. It is similar to chess. You know, I hate to say this, but I find chess a little boring. I hate chess, but again, I hate to say this, memorize, I hate to say this, but specifically when you disagree with someone or if you don't want to break that person's heart, you can say, I hate to say it. Well, even so, even, even you hate chess, you should give it a try. You should try playing Go. I think it's intellectually stimulating intellect you know it it can how can i say arouse your brain activity your brain functionality understand intellectually stimulating it stimulates in other words your brain can work out with this game or with chess let's say it's a good exercise for the brain I am certain, I am sure you would like it. Just give it a try. Now let's talk about some sports, like extreme sports. Ways to express fear and fearlessness. How you can express your fear or fearlessness the way that they state that you, you do not fear anything. Opposite. Fear, fearlessness, opposite. So on the left side, we can talk about fearlessness. On the right side, we can talk about fear. So I can't wait to go hang gliding, as you can see in the picture. I can't wait to go hang gliding. It's so enjoyable. So fearlessness. The person doesn't fear. The other person says, I wouldn't dare go hang gliding. I wouldn't dare. It is impossible for me. I don't have gut, I don't have courage to, to do it. Next one, skydiving doesn't scare me a bit. A little bit, even a little bit doesn't scare me a bit, skydiving. Skydiving scares the life out of me. The life out of me, what a beautiful sentence. The skydiving scares the life out of me. Means I really... I'm really frightened. It really intimidates me. There is nothing like surfing. I mean, surfing is the best activity, the best sport, the person says. There's nothing like surfing. I really enjoy it. There is not a chance I would go surfing. It is impossible. There is no chance, not a chance I would go surfing. I can't get enough of white water rafting I love it I can't get enough of it 
the more I play, the more I do it actually, I feel better and better. You wouldn't catch me whitewater rafting. You cannot catch me. I mean, find me and arrest me. Catch me whitewater rafting. It is impossible because it really intimidates me. Bungee jumping, as you can see in the picture and the uh, picture below. Bungee, bungee jumping is no sweat. No sweat. Easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. You would have to be out of your mind to go bungee jumping. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy to go bungee jumping? It is impossible. Beautiful. Now let's talk about extra extreme sports, but we are going to talk about the vocabulary only. So waterfall jumping, as you can see in the picture, mountain biking, extreme skiing, skydiving, surfing, rock climbing. These are really risky and, and dangerous. So you have to be really careful. And I don't know which one do you like, but are you in favor of extreme sports? Just leave your comment below the video. Thank you guys for listening and watching. I hope it was useful. C1 level literally finished. I hope in the future I can create more uh, courses like this with other books or with other materials or we can talk about some much more advanced level like C2 level, let's say proficiency level, or some academic levels, I don't know, business levels. Uh, hopefully I will, I will do them, okay? Until that time, live long and prosper. Take care.